This is a laser. And this is a rock. And this is what the laser could do to that rock. This is the L2 from Acer. This is a 24 watt diode laser. It also comes in a 36 watt variety, but I don't have that here. I would love to test that out someday, but I have the 24 right here, which is about twice the power of almost every laser I've tested in my shop so far, not counting the CO2 laser. I highly recommend taking a look at the pre-order and being one of the first to put this on your shop and see how it could speed up and make your production even better. I hope this is gonna be a standard with all the lasers, but they already provide a, a steel bottom plate for your uh, laser engraving and cutting, which is pretty cool. Most companies don't do this, and I like the fact they're doing it. It's not the same as a honeycomb tray, but at least they give you a steel base to cut on top of, which is really good. Let's take a look at all the goodness inside. And here we go. We've got a nice, thick user manual right there. I'm not really sure how many people really use this, but I'm kind of glad that they have it. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Thank you, Mr. Dresta. Another smaller manual. I'm not really sure why there's both. I think one's primarily for use and the other's for installation. I'll probably be referencing this just for for my peace of mind, even though I put so many of these together, I could probably figure out most of it. But here's the installation guide, or the assembly guide, rather. And here's everything that comes in the box kind of laid out. We have some nice beefy rails there. We have our gantry where the lasers are gonna get mounted. Air compressor. LCD touchscreen. Cables, all that stuff. And here is our main attraction. A nice, big, beefy diode laser. There's all the goodies. Let's start getting this thing put together. I put enough of these together to kind of know how this goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get things set up and we'll do like a little bit of montage. Um, if there's anything that I think is different and kind of remarkable in terms of the construction, I'll take time to kind of talk about it specifically, especially in comparison to all the other lasers I've put together now, which is probably around six or seven. So I have a little bit of knowledge um, I'm going to get to it. The primary frame went together pretty easily. Um, although there was probably about 15 or 20 screws that had to get screwed in, which is fine. You want to make sure that the frame is always staying square at all times. In fact, the most annoying part of the build so far has been taking the saran wrap plastic off of the steel rod. I was finally able to get a knife and kind of slice it off, but it was still kind of a pain. Not a big deal, more like a convenience factor. Um, this rod has to get slid into the front um, as part of the, uh, I don't know what the proper term is, almost like the axle that will turn to help rotate the gantry back and forth. So, um, Not all laser companies require you to install something like this. Um, this company does, and there's one other company too, I can't remember what it was, but let me get that installed and then I'll be able to get the gantry on and we'll almost be ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and slide in the shaft. No jokes, it's a PG channel. See, Dad, I finally learned how to use my head. This is a pro installer technique. But this is what I need to get this angle, unfortunately. This thing doesn't balance, so got that second screw in for the limit switch, and now the limit switch is installed. Everything is structurally put together for the laser for the most part. The gantry's on, the limit switch is installed, and now I get to play fake electrician and connect a bunch of cables, and then finally put the laser head on. So we're almost there. It's taken a lot longer than I kind of anticipated, partially because I'm trying to film at the same time, but there were a couple small things that um, were a little bit unexpected and a little bit more 
difficult to get into, especially with these um, sausage fingers, but hopefully within about five, 10 more minutes, you'll be all set. and just slap it on there. Laser sports a 410 millimeter by 410 millimeter work area. It has autofocus, limit switches, and a nice little gantry you can manually move up and down, or you could have it motorized through light burn. The laser also comes with a bunch of safety features, including flame detection and tilt detection. Although I'm not sure who's tilting their lasers, but flame detection is helpful. Or just about with any diode laser, I think flame detection is a really good idea, especially because they are not in closed systems. The laser also comes with a magnetically attached LCD screen here that you can use to change a bunch of the settings. You can also load up G-code files here and run them directly from the laser itself without being attached to anything else. And there's quite a few different features there and settings that you can control manually here on the laser. So there's a lot of options here. On top of the machine, you have a push button start. You also have a key that allow you to lock the machine when not in use and keep those you know, little, little kid fingers away if you have any little ones in the house. USB for transferring files with a bunch of connections here on the side. They include the HDMI for the panel, USB-C, power, and also a direct port for the built-in air compressor. Well, it's not really built in, but the power is built in so you don't have to connect a separate power supply to run your compressor and the compressor will automatically kick on when the program tells it to, and it runs nice and quiet, and it runs really, really well. The build quality of the machine is really impressive. It, for the most part, it has closed-in beams with a couple of spots where you get access belts for tightening and everything like that, but it's also fairly heavy, probably the heaviest laser that I own right now, um, as far as the dial lasers, and which is really a good thing because this is supposed to move at a top speed of 54,000, millimeters a minute and if you have a machine moving that fast you want to make sure it's heavy stays on the ground or stays at least to your work surface and doesn't move around this 24 watt laser features an led readout on the front when it's actually running and shows the power level usually going up and down as it changes power when it's engraving it also has auto level right there the little uh button there which works most of the time although it does have issues from time to time and I'll talk about that a little bit later. You have the laser head and air assist built in to the top to go along with the included air compressor, which is really nice. And just as a size comparison, here is the 24 watt Aitzer with the Xtool 10 watt side by side. So definitely a size difference, but not as big of a difference as I kind of uh, anticipated, even with the uh, the added shields on the bottom, but yeah, the 24 watts definitely bigger. Focusing the laser is pretty easy. There is a one button macro that you can set up in Lightburn, and they even give you documentation on how to do that. Actually for Lightburn or Laser Gerbil, they show you how to do it for both. Simple one touch autofocusing, and we'll see if it'll actually do it correctly here. And hey, it worked. If you have any kind of flex in your piece that you're going to be working on, um, sometimes it'll get a little bit funky. Or I noticed that if you're working too close to the actual base, it actually works better if things are risen, uh, you know, raised up a little bit. Um, it could have some potential issues. And if it doesn't focus quite the way that you're hoping, they included this little focus stick here that you can actually just set right up here and try to line it up and focus. It looks like most focus points are roughly around the five uh, millimeter range. Although I kind of wish they would have flipped the numbers around so the numbers are closer here and you could actually see it line up better. Um, you could kind of, you could kind of tell and uh, figure it out, but it's more like a convenience thing. It's a really, really kind of minor gripe, but. I would 
rather have this than not have this. Actually, the other thing too is, I wish they would just made it a five millimeter thickness. You could just throw this under the laser to focus it because this is, I think about 11 millimeters. Actually, no, I think it's about seven. I think I measured it, but they should just made this five thick. You guys laid it under anyways. It's the thought that counts, I, I guess. All right, I got it together. It didn't take that long. I have some test files fired up and ready to go. So let's start engraving some stuff. This photo engraving of Harrison Ford came out fantastic. The quality is really good. And something that's different than the other lasers, at least the diode lasers that I've been testing and doing this one picture with, is that it really engraved a lot deeper into the wood and actually gave it a better effect, especially that light versus dark effect without having to use things like borax and water or any kind of darkening agent. It came out really good. A lot of the 10 watt lasers will still do a good job visually, but it's simply acting more like a printer depositing a black dot as opposed to really engraving into the material. So this is a really good result. And as long as you have a photo that has a high contrast and it's calibrated correctly, you should be able to get that type of quality. And here is the laser test that I ran, although I'm gonna be completely honest and say that I think that there's something not quite right about the test and the way that you see this gradient pattern, the way it ran. Now, this could be the way that I set it up and ran it, or it could be something wrong in the file itself. But this part right here is kind of what I care about the most right now. So with this laser, and it looks like the sweet spot is roughly about 300 millimeters a minute with 100% power, although you could go um, I think that's what 250 at 75% power as well and those cut pretty clean Something else I want to show really quick is that this is the test file that they have Already built onto the USB drive that they give you ignore these these burn marks That's from stuff on the other side But this was run at a really fast speed. I forget the speed offhand off to kind of maybe check my notes on it but this entire thing I think took about fit between 15 to 17 minutes to complete the quality is really good. Uh, I could have probably ran it at a higher power to make it a little bit darker, but it really was a high speed test. In fact, that's the way it's listed and discussed on the actual uh, file. So you can engrave really fast because the machine is so heavy, you don't have to worry about it um, moving around. And by comparison, I've also ran high speed tests with a lot of my other lasers. And there is a safety setting where if something moves around too much, it will actually stop the engrave. And I think that's due to the machine not being heavy enough or something along those lines. But because the machine is heavier, it's not moving around and allowed the engraving at a much higher speed. I don't know how practical this is on a regular basis, um, but I guess it could be as long as you get the power level and the, the darkness that you want. But there's other ways of working on that and doing that too. All right, so a little bit of explanation about this uh, beforehand. With most diode lasers, I don't do a lot of cutting, mainly because I don't think it's really time effective with how long it takes to cut material out of three millimeter stock, at least with the 10 watt lasers that I've been testing for the last year. But with the 24 watt, I thought I would try to do a more like traditional type of, I, I guess like a slotted cutting type project and Let's talk about what happened. I was trying to dial in the exact power level for a lot of these, and a lot of them did not cut all the way through until I dialed it in on the very last, I guess, uh, file for this or part of this, and you can see it all cut really well. Now, I had really good intentions in doing this to actually pop this out and put it together, but looking at all these little tabs and pieces that you would actually need to put things together, at that scale, um, I, I don't think I wanna spend the time doing that because I really didn't care that much about the item to begin with. I cared really more about the power of the laser and how well it was cutting things out. If you don't own a laser, especially a CO2 laser, and you're looking for something small and compact, at least for an area like uh, a garage, the dial laser is not a bad way to go, especially the new Azer. And you can cut and engrave in a decent amount of time. I would love for it to be faster, in the cutting i really would but 300 millimeters a minute is acceptable especially if you don't have any other options for doing really small delicate cutting work 
like this. One of the benefits of using a diode laser is the wide variety of items that you can laser engrave and or cut. I think Acer has an advertised list of about 30 different items and I have maybe three or four that I'm testing here today. I happen to have quite a few of these anodized business cards and almost any laser will actually work on these in terms of just removing the paint from the surface. It was able to complete the job really quickly. What I cared about even more was on something this small and you have really delicate type of lettering, it's really important that it's clear. And on this business card, which is really only about two and a half by two inches somewhere in there, it had a really, really good result. The letters are really clear, although the camera's not doing it justice in terms of picking it up. And these actually sell. So if you're doing this as a business, you have an interest in making money or doing this as a hobby, maybe making some money to kind of support the hobby. There's a lot of people that are looking for products like this and five minutes a piece at the most, and you can batch these out really fast. So impressed with a more powerful laser doing really delicate work. With LT you can also engrave metal, although marking metal is probably the better term. And because of the higher power, you can actually get different colors on the metal engraving. This, I have this, you know, actually kind of blue color that I did as a dog tag. You can do all sorts of materials, get really good results, and have a lot of fun in the shop with this laser. So it's that time of the video where we start to wrap things up. And I tell you that the Acer L2 is a really good option for you for your shop, especially if you don't already have a laser in your shop. If you want something that is fast, is durable, will last, and does cutting, then this should definitely be a consideration for you. And right now, part of their pre-sale, they're doing $300 off and you get this laser for $10.99, which I think is a great price in comparison to other lasers of similar um, specifications that are currently on the market. Atr has been around for a while. You can go online, you can find a lot of reviews of their previous lasers. This is their newest one and I am really happy with it. This will probably make it into my main laser rotation, which I always have three lasers set up for different tasks, but I will cover the reason for that in a different video. Once again, if you choose to buy this laser, I have an affiliate link down below. Yes, that does help the channel and hopefully encourages companies to keep sending me some lasers so I can review them, so I can give you my best honest opinion on these machines. I also have a lot of other videos in my back catalog that are not laser related if you'd like to go and check those out. We also have a website, geekbuilders.net, where you can check out some items that we have in the shop. And I'm gonna be uploading a lot of files this summer, some of them for free, for laser tests and other items. Uh, that you can uh, kind of experiment with in the shop. If you do end up picking one of these lasers, I would love to hear from you. And also feel free to ask any questions you might have. I'd be happy to answer any of them. For the meantime, that is just a theory. A laser, wait, that's actually, that's not mine. Um, don't forget to design, make, and play. Have fun making yourself in your shop. See you next time.